Don in London, hello, it's June 28th. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive under the influence towards people, places and things. What do I mean by that? Well, addicted to being with the right people, in the right places, doing the right things and having the right things. And often wanting and wanting and trying to get it right very trying person but I did make a success of a lot of things so when driven that's what happens oh and by the way noise is off in the restaurant across the road from me I think a lift is being installed so there's quite a lot of banging and whatever just part of life so addiction and into recovery how did it happen well I got support from family friends people in society, society itself, community and professionals who helped me stay alive long enough to get the message that I could not beat addiction on my own. And every time somebody gave me a suggestion or said I should do this or that in order to get well, I said yes I'll try it. And of course I didn't. I would go away and try and do it on my own. Or get angry and resentful that people wanted to interfere in me and my life and that's the worst of it the worst was I couldn't do it on my own yet anybody who suggested anything or said you should do this I rejected it out of hand because I didn't want to be messed with I wanted to try and sort it out myself that's what I was taught to do stand on my own two feet and sort it out and in the end I couldn't so the moment of clarity where life couldn't get any worse I thought at the time I thought, well, okay, I can't do it on my own. Life can't get any worse. I've been on the edge of death too many times, and I need help. So reluctantly, I agreed with what everybody had said. But what help? In the end, it came down to understanding enough that there were a bunch of people out there who could find sobriety and keep sober one day at a time. And they were part of the fellowship of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. Now I know there are other ways to be sober, but AA works for me. So I talk a lot about it, but I do not represent AA, the fellowship, nor anyone in it, because it's full of unique, authentic people who speak for themselves where they will, either publicly or privately, or in the rooms and groups of the fellowship of AA. And the fellowship of AA is run for each and every individual in it. So we can't speak for other people, we can only speak for ourselves. And often if you go to a meeting, if you're new to the idea, you will, help, you will hear people say, I do not speak for AA, I can only speak for myself. But truthfully, that's the only thing we can do. We speak about why life is working sober. And most often we speak about it when it doesn't work, quite as we might have wished or wanted. But most often our needs are met and life goes on. So it can't always be uh, an absolutely wonderful ride along the path of wherever we're going to. It's often very, very difficult. And by sharing our experiences of the difficulties of life, we make progress because we can get feedback. And it can come in many ways, either a quiet word from a friend in a group or because we are sober, we can go to outside sources and get the right help from those me maybe we need to talk to. So the first part of my videos on any day really are my own thoughts about what's going on in my life or, or things which are re real to me. And then some videos from previous years have been tacked on plus the steps re reading from the 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, the toolkit, if you like, of the, the fellowship. So for today, May 28th, and these are recollections really. What's come to, come to mind this morning, after a very, very hot night, the hottest day and night in the UK this year, and it's taken till June 28th, past the summer solstice, to have this happen. Our weather's weird. Anyway, for me this one is quite a serious one. 90 meetings in 90 days seemed like a tall order that's what was suggested to me. It was never an order, it was a, a suggestion. And I wanted to belong somewhere instead of sitting in a bar on a park bench 
unable to reach out and wishing for my last breath. I went to as many meetings as I could and started to belong again. And that was it, really. I had no... In the end, I had no idea what to do with myself. But asking for help, having got to such a desperate state, it almost seemed like if I had fallen asleep and never woken up again, it might have been preferred. And I think we all get to that stage. It's called the jumping off point, where life has no meaning anymore, and we just don't know what to do. But it did seem worth having a go, and those first 90 days were very difficult because I needed to stay somewhere safe and the only safe place I could find where my mind wouldn't wander back into where is the nearest drink and how far away is it seemed to be going to a meeting of AA where people were horribly happy or wonderfully miserable and in between there were people who were just sort of sane and getting on with life and happy in a way which was real and it all seemed very, very strange indeed that these people would welcome me into a meeting where I couldn't look after myself, let alone make any sort of contribution. And then somebody said, why don't you just put your hand out at the door and greet people? And that's how it started. So 90 meetings in 90 days became quite a lot of meetings in 90 days. But I started to feel like I belonged somewhere again. I had the chance to get my identity back. To, well, indeed, the chance to reminisce about my history and find out what had gone on and where it had all collapsed and gone wrong for me. So I was very lucky. You know, that, that, that when somebody said, it's only a suggestion, try 90 meetings in 90 days, there were other suggestions which just made me very cross, like get a job when I didn't have the money to get anywhere or do anything or put a CV together. People try and give you good advice a bit too quick in recovery because they want you to be well and happy and doing something useful. Anyway, it started to happen. And then for me, recovery has been a combination of listening to wisdom in the fellowship of AA, support from fam family, friends, community and professionals, and especially medical professionals who help me understand the true nature of three clinical and chronic conditions I have. And they weren't all apparent at the beginning of my recovery, but uh, the addiction to alcohol is a chronic condition. It doesn't go away and if I were to start drinking again. However, would I stop on my own? I don't want to start again. And what came along in recovery, after following some advice and a suggestion to have a, um, a small surgical procedure, was type 1 diabetes because of a virus which shut off my insulin production. And the other chronic condition, which I'd really sort of known about, but didn't know other than to, I suppose, stiff up a lip and stand on my own t two feet, was uh, the clinical condition of depression, which goes in cycles and can be helped with the right medical support. And it can be talking therapy or chemical therapy, and each is appropriate to the person who is asking for help. So. An example recently for me was somebody who still 18 years sober and dry drunk, but he seems to be addicted to the anger and resentment. They have tried everything and they have good reason to have clinical depression. At the same time they refuse medication and medical advice because they see that as a failing of themselves as a human being, not a failing of the program because the program says find help where help is needed and uh, accept help and accept suggestions which seem pertinent to you. So it can be very difficult. We can become addicted to the idea that we can survive without medical interventions and still be well when in fact we know full well we're not well or as well as we could be. That is to be normal not to be superhuman but to be normal experience experiencing feelings which are real the feelings fitting the reality that we're living rather than a, an angry angry and resentful person who is still living the past so it is always a talking therapy and AA has provided the greatest talking therapy I can ever ever talk about anyway some of the other things from the past years yeah, this, af this afternoon's challenge, though life is difficult, I need to trust a good conscience, my own, 
keep learning and know I am powerless over anyone else and their conscience accept clarity when it happens let go and move on knowing can be dark and when we know other people are living in dark places or dark thoughts and they refuse help or they they are attached to the the darker side of our emotions where they want to be angry resentful and complain of the world for not giving them what they deserve I think that's what it was about at that time last year but it, knowing it can be dark because we can't pull people out of it if they're really determined to hang on to their old ideas yes meditation spiritual and acceptance to engage in mental exercise as concentration on one's breathing or repetition or a feeling of thought for the purpose of reaching spiritual awareness spiritual the reality of now acceptance what we can do and cannot do today yes yeah, so prayer and meditation I guess this is where mm -hmm. I was coming from meditation spiritual and acceptance to engage in mental exercise to understand what we're doing to concentrate on one's breathing being in the moment of now the thoughts of now about now for the purpose of reaching spiritual awareness which is living in the moment and I was having a chat with somebody a couple of days ago about you know, what is spiritual awareness and can we become spiritual giants and the answer is often we can be a spiritual giant in the moment giants in our own head but not in any other way maybe we are in the moment of now so spiritual is always in the moment of now and we can get more adept at being in the moment of now but it won't make us a giant of spirituality I don't know what that might be and this is the thought which has really been around for a while with me and it's about society as it is today and what I see often happening with uh, large large groups of people some groups have more than others and when I worked in uh, various businesses helping senior people I was aware that they had to make some hard choices about how those companies worked but one of the things which came to me and has stuck with me for me and my opinion I guess we cannot keep anything we would take away from others freedom to develop our understanding of living spiritual emotional and physical in the fellowship we offer a path to life on life's terms we do not control we support and challenge then courage faith and confidence may flourish and that's what it is we cannot keep anything we would take away from others which is free will I guess freedom to develop our understanding of living spiritual living in the moment of now emotional our feelings fitting what's going on and physically the best we can be given our situation and in fellowship we offer a path to life on life's terms we don't control other people we support and challenge then courage faith and confidence may flourish and a lot of that's to do with step six and seven step six is where my defects of character come out and I think I know better than you how you ought to live your life and step seven is the courage faith and confidence to get on with my own life and not, not judge other people and what they're up to so that's me for June 28th this year and I woke up feeling horrible my blood sugars weren't too bad for my type 1 diabetes so right injections, right amount get things back in balance but I did forget to take my other medication so extreme pain physically which then brings my mood down when my mood collapses like that life, is, life can be quite dark for a little while so how do I help myself which is to remind myself what was it like 90 meetings in 90 days well I did do a lot more than 90 meetings in those 90 days and life is never going to be that painful again I hope but pain happens and you know, pain is, they say t pain is the touchstone of spiritual progress pain reminds us, reminds us that we're in the mo moment of now when I get pain it's often associated with uh, poor blood sugar control uh, neuropathies created by di diabetes and uh, general de degeneration of me as I get older and that's pain so I have to do what is appropriate for me to do follow medical advice but if I were to follow some advice I would be living in pain all the time 
to a higher degree than I do. So I take medical advice. It doesn't alter my emotional balance unless I get it wrong in terms of uh, looking after myself. It's about being on the same playing field as everybody else to experience normal life feelings as feelings are for the moment of now, rather than our history piling in on top of uh, a situation like here we go again, or I've never experienced something so wonderful, and the answer is of course we have, but today it's more real because we feel it, and we're not actually medicating away our lives. It's a great gift to be sober today, and it was one which I thought I would never get. I had to ask for help. Have, I have, have, have had to learn humility. I think I had humility, but it got distorted somehow by, and bent out of shape by life experiences. But now it seems to have come back. So I'm learning each day how to learn again. And that is one of the things which keeps me going. Learning what my condition is. How am I feeling? Why? What can I do? And if I don't know what to do, I'm sure there's somebody out there who can help me. All I need to do is ask. Anyway, more on uh, the daily reflections and other bits and pieces in the long video for June 28th. This one might just go out as it is, depending on how much time I've got. So I will say the serenity prayer, which I normally share at the beginning, sorry, at the end of all videos. To God or in good conscience, as you come to believe for yourself, for yourself, what you believe is important. To God or in good conscience. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today. Don in London, hello. My daily video all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour, equally addictive. People, places, things, work, relationships. Always trying to fix myself because something was missing inside me. And I used drink, alcohol to carry all that until I was awash and could never stop. These days, though, I'm just sober one day at a time. And here I share daily reflections from this book, the AA Daily Reflections book. I don't speak for AA, never can, never will. AA is full of unique, authentic people who speak for themselves. And I learn, experience, strength and hope and wisdom from what I hear in the rooms of AA, so I may put it into practice in my daily living. But sharing here, today's daily reflection for June 28th, the determination of our founders. A year and six months later, these three had succeeded with seven more, simply sharing experience, strength and hope, and how to be sober. If it had not been for the, for the fierce determination of our founders, AA would have quickly faded like so many other so-called so good causes. I look at the hundreds of meetings weekly in the, in the city where I live now, and I know AA is available 24 hours a day. If I had had to hang on with, with nothing but hope and a desire not to drink, experiencing rejection wherever I went, I would have sought the easier, softer way and returned to my previous way of life. For some of us, we might have returned to that life, but you know what, I was on death's door by the time I got to AA. And it wasn't, that wasn't the rock bottom moment actually. The rock bottom had happened long before and it wasn't a question of whether I would survive or not. It was simply I didn't know how else to survive because I didn't want to wake up. But somehow that moment of clarity which said it cannot get any worse and I cannot do it on my own meant I could seek help. And thank goodness the fellowship focuses on one thing, a desire to stop drinking. And it worked for me and it continues to work just one day at a time. So, at the end of these videos, I always share the serenity prayer to God or good conscience, as you choose. But for me, God is love, God is truth, God works through people. Very, very easy for me to understand. I would never understand, but, well, I couldn't define God, even if I was asked to. 
To God, all good conscience, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference is simply for me, just for today. Don in London, hello. It's June 28, 2009. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. So whatever your addiction, whatever your behaviour, substance or behaviour, mine were, or still would be, alcohol first. I uh, never got to drugs and rock and roll in that sense. But my behaviour could also be cross-addicted in the, in the sense of when I wasn't drinking, I was working, so I worked a in relationships, re relationship holic, good at starting, not good at finishing, and uh, that caused a lot of grief for me and other people. And really, not knowing myself very well all those years of drinking, because I like to take the edge off to improve my outlook, if you like, and feel that my world was open and I had lots of choices. And what I found with drink, of course, is that the choices became more and more limited. I became more isolated and excluded to, to that awful place where fear reigns over everything. And fear putting on a brave face and I guess, well, fear brave facing ego. I say that with a big sort of sigh and sadness, but it's replaced more often than, than not these days with more courage, more faith and more confidence. And in the fellowship of AA, my fellowship, I call it my fellowship, I'm just a part of, uh, as equal to any other person who is part of AA. That's the Fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous. And it's full of unique, authentic people, at least I hope so. I feel it is. And we develop our own personal outlook, which is also unique and authentic. And help, it helps us make recovery work for us, simply one day at a time. So I will share the AA preamble here, because it slows me down and makes me focus on these videos and what they're there to do, which is just to give some support, experience, strength and hope and wisdom from books and sometimes from my life experiences. So the preamble shared at every meeting of AA I attend in London, uh, there are 720 to choose from. Yeah, and I only go to a few of them. This is the preamble, it goes like this. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any set denomination, politics, organisation or institution. It does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And you be, because although it took me a long time to get the message that I could be unique and authentic and still go to a fellowship which seemed to have um, 12 steps of action for, for me and 12 traditions which held the fellowship together. And behind the 12 steps is an open and honest, willing attitude. And behind the traditions is recovery, unity and service. So in principle, and the suggestions as they are for 12 steps are pretty darn good for me because it gives me a framework upon which I can hang my life and uh, whatever is going on for me. So those 12 steps work and it's the sixth month of the year. So the sixth step, one a month, is all about having our defects of character removed. And of course we can't have more removed. And they're based on the seven deadly sins. So I have a little crib sheet here and I'll, I'll just share the sins and virtues, what sins being cured by the virtues if you like, or putting us in a place of balance. Humility cures pride, kindness cures envy, abstinence cures gluttony, chastity cures lust, patience, patience cures wrath, liberality cures greed, and diligence cures sloth. And uh, most alcoholics are not slothful in their outlook when they're drinking because they're always very active trying to find more and find situations, people, places and things where it's okay and acceptable to keep on drinking. And even then, we're not really satisfied because we're quite happy to sit alone at home and keep on drinking 24-7 as the malady gets worse and worse and worse. And that is the great problem. And the, the solution 
Here's often a moment of clarity at rock bottom, or a moment of clarity somewhere which says, I cannot get out of this on my own. And that simple admission, I cannot do it on my own, can lead to hope, because there, is plenty of, there are plenty of solutions out there to help. AA is not the only one, but it works for me, and I'm very pleased to be a part of a fellowship, even if I can't speak for it, because I can't. So I use the literature to keep me on track, and in the uh, two books I sort of feature here, there's As Bill Sees It and The Daily Reflections, and I've just been updating my Facebook pages with my profile, which it was sort of yes and no, good and bad, and um, accepting where things are today in terms of relationships around me and my relationships with other people. And sometimes we uh, may not be quite sure if we're in the right place, but actually we are, because if we, we don't know. It's better not to know quite and be quite certain that you don't know. I don't know what I don't know, because it leaves the door open to all the possibilities of living. And that's, that's not dishonest, it's being honest and truthful about where life is today. And uh, hmm, makes me wonder, but it's not hateful or undermining in any way. So, for June 28th, this one is quite simple. It talks about the determination of our founders. <clears throat> a year and six months later, these three had succeeded with seven more. And that comes from AA's Big Book 159, page 159. If it had not been for the fierce determination of our founders, AA would have likely faded like so many other so-called good, so good causes. I look at the hundreds of meetings weekly in the city, the city where I live, and I know AA is available 24 hours a day. If I had had to hang on with nothing but hope and a desire not to drink, experiencing rejection wherever I went, I would have sought the easier, softer way and returned to my previous way of life. And for me, my previous way of life was killing me. And uh, it nearly did a couple of times. And uh, intensive care is not a nice place to be in hosp hospital even if you're joking and completely in denial about what, is, what put you there in the first place. And for us, Bill sees it. It says here, beyond agnosticism. So for me, just before I start reading this, I, I have a view of uh, higher powers. It, it's like this. I, I like Gandhi's understanding, which leaves the door open to all the possibilities, that God is truth, God is love, and God works through people. And that means we experience the higher power around us all the time because we tap into the wisdom of life and people and the centuries to which I suppose we, we have centuries of civilization which we we don't realize we have all around us and it forms the context. Yeah I've got two minutes for this. Uh, beyond agnosticism we of agnostic temperament found that as soon as we were able to lay aside prejudice and express even a willingness to believe in a power greater than ourselves, we commenced to get results, even though it was impossible for any, any of us fully to fully define or comprehend that power, which is God. And, you know, to actually define it or comprehend that power, which is God. Often, I heard a quote, and I don't know where it comes from, I've tried to look it up, and it goes along the lines of, if we can define God, we deny God. And, you know, if we thought we could define him, we would put ourselves on the same level, I guess. But it goes on to say here, Many people so soberly assure me, assure me that man has no better place in the universe than that of another competing organism, fighting its way through life, only to perish in the end. Hearing this, I feel that I still prefer to cling to the so-called illusion of religion, which in my own experience has meaningfully told me something very different. And I guess, in some ways, you know, life is about gut feeling, and um, the gut feel that we have is often truthful, and it's then our intellect which sort of tears it to pieces. But, you know, myths, legends, wherever it comes from, or the higher power, which has, for me, good conscience is a higher power. If I tap into the higher power of good conscience, I'm onto a, a place where I can take the wisdom in from other people. So if God is working through other people, I guess that is my simple understanding. So God is love, God is truth. Anyway, to the serenity prayer, which keeps me safe most days, and I meditate using it. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom 
to learn the difference or know the difference on a daily basis and always just for today. Dying London, good morning, and it's June 28th, 2008, and uh, I suppose it's been, uh, uh, I suppose it's been a difficult few days actually, <coughs> lots of things going on, and uh, new things in my life, and remembrances too, and I think, you know, sometimes my remembrances of times past, this time last year when my sister's partner was so ill, and he died on July 8th, uh, haunt me a little bit in me and my behaviour in the present day and the reason being um, being in a relationship and also having one or two complicated health problems of my own which are managed on a daily basis made me feel vulnerable and also I suppose concerned not only for myself but for the people who get involved with me and maybe I take too much responsibility on my own shoulders for decisions other people will make about whether they want to know me or not. And I think that's true. And the reason why I'm being honest this morning is it's been on my mind for a few days now that uh, I'm in a relationship and it's been wonderful. And at the same time, it's been going really quickly. And that it's like when I pause and think and feel about, you know, where, where, where will we end up? And the answer is 51% uh, of the time in a good place and 49% of the time in a difficult situation where I might just expire and then leave a, a great big hole in lives. But I cannot, be, I cannot stop that happening. And I'm starting to realise that I am powerless over those sorts of decisions. How people know me and if I'm truthful with them, open and honest as much as I can be then I have a better, better chance of informing them whether to be involved or not rather than make the decision for them and for me not to be involved at all and it's been bothering me it's been bothering me greatly and somebody I know from the rooms who saw me across a crowded meeting of AA last night uh, emailed me and said are you alright and actually no I wasn't alright and I was, I was in a calamitous frame of mind wanting to make sure I protected other people from what might happen to me and again I realise again I'm powerless over that and maybe all I need to do is raise the issue and make it very clear this is how I've been feeling and when I do that <coughs> it's the way it is and then people make up their own minds so I'm learning a lot in a very short space of time about what may be and may be not and that it's not down to me to guide everybody away from me or to uh, not engage in life because I, I have complaints which won't go away. <coughs> so I, I am feeling a bit tormented and I guess what I do when I feel tormented is go to a fellowship meeting of AA because somewhere there will be some experience, strength and hope which is shared which helps me understand what is going on and uh, I went to a different meeting last night one at uh, the Boltons where I've been before on many occasions on a Friday night and it's often called Glamour Night and it seems to have got more practical nights actually it used to be, be where people put on their posh frocks ready to go out and do something else and last night it was very, very down to earth and very practical and people speaking from the heart about what was going on for them and I needed to sit there and listen and to my left I had a friend who I got to know quite well and to my right on one step, one chair forward another friend who knows me quite well as well and they, they saw both gentlemen of um, extreme age like me <coughs> or much older actually who have been around the block and still feel sore with their feet and their heads because uh, we're all prone to being fragile and the fear is sometimes often that uh, we may expire and leave people in a place of torment and I guess that's what really occurred to me in this last few days really life going very quickly uh, maybe not giving myself enough time to assimilate what's been going on and also knowing that it's a very very difficult time of year and uh, my remembrances of last year at this time were dreadful 
and uh, not being able to cope too well because when people are dying and there's no way to stop it, what do we do? We do our very best, our utmost in the moments that are there and then we try and deal with life after, afterwards and uh, we do our best. Anyway, this is all about AA and fellowship and moving along. So why do I go to fellowship meetings? This is the reason why I go on a daily basis if I can get there. It says in the preamble, Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy. Neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And uh, that also applies to me. You know, I keep on forgetting it. I don't do these videos just for the sheer hell of it. But they help me sort my life out. It's my way of reflecting on the day and meditating maybe. Being an extrovert, this is my, my, my way. Anyway, so what do I know? <coughs> I cannot make decisions for other people. I am powerless over people, places and things and it, what it means is I can make good choices to be involved or not be involved in what's going on around me and the invitations to be involved and to be included are very, very valuable and often what I would like because I'm a human being who likes company, likes to love and likes to be loved and have something useful to do, as Freud said. So, <coughs> I feel better right now I've had a phone call or talked to uh, significant others this morning already and uh, I feel better in my own mind that we can resolve issues one way or another it's not it's not about resolving to a conclusion it's about resolving how we work at living and sharing and including and not excluding and uh, my old my old behavior is to caretake people and exclude them from the, the pains I feel and what I'm finding is I need to include people and share my pain when it's happening so that I may find a better path to recovery on a daily basis. So a lot in me has been about self-protection, but also protecting others when in fact they need no protection, especially from me. So I don't know how much of the readings I can do now. <coughs> uh, data reflections for the 28th. It says here, the determination of our founders. A year and six months later, these three had succeeded with seven more, and goes on to say, if it had not been for the fierce determination of our founders, AA would have quickly faded like so many other so-called good causes. I looked at the hundreds of meetings weekly in the city where I live, and I now know, and I know AA is available 24 hours a day. If I had had to hang with, on with nothing but hope and a des desire not to drink, experiencing rejection wherever I want, I went, I would have sought the easier, softer way and returned to my previous way of life. And the answer is, when we return to that precarious way of life, we are certain to die sooner than later. And, uh, you know, without AA, where would I be? There's 700 meetings in London on a weekly basis, or thereabouts. Some are very good, and some are not so good. Anyway, as Bill sees it, uh, I, I read these out linearly so they don't actually correspond to maybe something I've said from the daily reading book. Page 183, a viewer with alarm. I went through several, fru several fruitless years in a state called viewing with alarm for the good of the movement. This is Bill talking about Bill, Bill Wilson, the found co-founder. I thought it was up to me to be always correcting solutions, seldom had anybody been able to tell me what I ought to do and nobody ever succeeded in effectively telling me what I must do. I had to learn the hard way out of my own experience. When setting out to check others, I found myself often motivated by fear of what they were doing, self-righteousness and even downright intolerance. Consequently, I seldom succeeded in correcting anything. I just raised barriers of resentment that cut off any suggestion, example, understanding or love. It goes on to say, AAs often say, our leaders do not drive by mandate, they lead by example. If we would favourably affect others, we, we ourselves need to practice what we preach. And forget the preaching too, that the quiet good example speaks for itself. See, now sometimes things do gel together, 
and we do need to hear a bit of wisdom. That is, uh, we take a lead for ourselves, we don't lead others, we need not protect them. We are powerless over people, places and things, and if we're lucky we get our choices back in life, and that's a day at a time. Don in London, hello. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. So these days, sober one day at a time. And that's what seems to work. Live in the day, live in the moment. Find my spiritual connection to living in the, in the moment of now. Spiritual life is real life. Everything is spiritual. So all those 35 years of drinking were spiritual and what follows on one day at a time is also spiritual. I suppose really the question is for anyone, what quality of spiritual do we enjoy best? And only a person can make up their own mind what is best for them. So I share about what helped me into recovery and to be sober one day at a time with the help and aid of fellowship, that fellowship is AA. And today I just want to read from this book, Twelve Steps and Twelve Traditions, which is the backbone I guess of much of what the fellowship is about. Twelve steps so we can live well, open, honest and willing. And the twelve traditions in fellowship, unity, service and recovery. Sounds like the dog downstairs is not having a good time. So what is AA? I just share off the preamble which is on this little card which explains to anyone what the fellowship is there to do to include people around being sober one day at a time and living a spiritual life knowing what our feelings are and not drinking. So what is AA? Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. It does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So it's all about being included. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. And what you make of your life with the help of fellowship and the 12 steps and the 12 traditions and the big book of AA and how you come to live life is as it works for you as an individual because we are all unique and authentic on our life path as we are. So we try not to tell each other what to do. But there are some principles involved, and the principles in the 12 steps and 12 tradi traditions help us to find a sober life. And uh, June, for me, is all about step six. So I share the step, and also a commentary about how it works for me. And step six, it says here, we were ready or rather were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. So what are defects and what are assets or what are our liabilities and what are our assets? It probably boils down to the in the biblical sense the seven deadly seven deadly sins and also the seven virtues, the opposite. And if you look on the internet you'll find many version and here's just a version which I picked up quite quickly right so pride is excessive belief in one's own abilities that interferes with the individual's recognition of the grace of God it has been called the sin from which all others arise pride is also known as vanity so pride is the first deadly sin or defect Envy is the desire for others, traits, status, abilities or situation. Gluttony, the third one, is an inordinate desire to consume more than, one, than 
more than that which one requires. Lust is an inordinate craving for the pleasures of the body. Anger is manifested in the individual who spurns love and opts instead for fury. It is also known as wrath, wrath or wrath. Sloth is the avoidance of physical or spiritual work. And the opposite, if you like, the seven contrary virtues. Humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality, diligence. And the contrary virtues were derived from the battle for uh, the, the poem, an epic poem written by Prudentius, circa 410 AD. An epic poem written. Practicing these virtues is alleged to protect one against temptation toward the seven deadly sins. Humility against pride, kindness against envy, abstinence against gluttony, chastity against lust, patience against anger, liberality against greed, and diligence against sloth. So, very black and white, you're either one or the other. But in real life, what are we? We're all of those things at different times in our lives. And although the seven deadly sins and the seven virtues may sound quite old-fashioned, we all have some sort of traits around those issues. And the twelve steps of the fellowship try to address this in, in the way I understand it, in step six and step seven. So step six is all about my defects of character, and step seven is all about my shortcomings. So my defects of character are the sins, and my shortcomings are not enough of the virtues, short on virtue. But in there somewhere is modern life, and life as it is today, and the changing values of society. But around that is a personal code. So these 12 steps, principles, these 12 steps are about developing our own personal code of living. And how we do that is entirely up to us. No one's going to stop us doing it another way. And if they were trying to stop us, our sins or deadly sins of pride would get in the way. We get stubborn and defiant often, or I did. So, step six in the fellowship program reads as this, with a bit of commentary from me. And don't forget, this is just a personal understanding. It's your understanding in the end which counts. And where do you get your personal understanding? from life, and also listening to the many voices in society, and probably in the fellowship of AA, if you stick around long enough. So, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. This is the step that separates the men from the boys, or the women from the girls. So de declares a well-loved clergyman who happens to be one of AA's greatest friends. He goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly step six yes he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly step six on all his, his faults without any reservations whatever has indeed come a long way spiritually and is therefore entitled to be called a man who is sincerely trying to grow in the image and likeness of his own creator and again, don't get hung up on Creator. It's the God of your understanding, or a power greater than you, which counts in this. The common good often is used or utilised. Of course, the often disputed question of whether God can and will, under certain, certain conditions, remove defects of character will be answered with a prompt affirmative by almost any AA member. To him, this proposition will be no theory at all. It will be just about the largest fact in his life. He will usually offer his proof in a statement like this. Sure, I was beaten, absolutely licked. My own willpower just wouldn't work on alcohol. Change of scene, the best efforts of family, friends, doctors and clergymen got no place with my alcoholism. I simply couldn't stop drinking. and No human being could seem to do the job for me. But when I became willing to clean house, that's step four and then asked a, a higher power God as I understand him to give me release my obsessions to drink vanished it was lifted right out of me 
but it didn't quite work that way because I was a stubborn son of a gun and I thought I knew better for a long time but when I got to fellowship I found there were a lot of people who had given up on pride and said self will will run riot and willpower will fail and it was right so I listened to the many voices if God works through people the wisdom came quick and easy for me so I stuck around for quite a while shivering with, with fear another one of my defects until I could keep on listening to what was working for other people and then I started to learn in AA meetings all over the world statements just like this are heard daily it is plain for everybody to see that each sober AA member has been granted a release from this very obstinate and potentially fatal obsession so in a very complete and literal way all AAs have become entirely ready to have God remove the mania for alcohol from their lives and God has pr proceeded to do exactly that and I would add to that as long as I keep on asking for help on a daily basis and listening and learning from others how to live life beyond, beyond just stopping drinking then my defects of character seem to diminish personality traits don't go away completely they just don't but if we ask on a daily basis at least we have a, a good chance that we will operate more to our virtues than our defects when men and women pour so much alcohol into themselves that they destroy their lives they commit a most unnatural act defying their instinctive desire for self-preservation they seem bent upon self-destruction they work against their best their own deepest instinct as they are humbled by the terrific beating administered by alcohol the grace of God can enter them and expel their obsession and uh, I guess the grace of God for me is keeping on learning and as it says humility kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience liber liberality and diligence so working on sober rather than working on the next drink Here, their powerful instinct to live can cooperate fully with their creator's desires to give them new life, for nature and God alike abhor suicide. But most of our other difficulties don't fall under such a category at all. Every normal person wants, for example, to eat, to reprodu reproduce, to be somebody in society, in the society of his fellows, and he wishes to be reasonably safe and secure as he tries to attain these things indeed God made him that way he did not design man to destroy himself by alcohol but he did give him give man instincts to help him stay alive it is nowhere evidence evident at least in this life that our creator expects us to fully eliminate our instinctive drives indeed that would be foolish to think that so far as we know it is nowhere on record that God has completely removed from any human being all his natural drives indeed that would be unnatural since most of us are born with an abundance of natural desires it isn't strange that we often let these far exceed their intended purpose and that's to do with our thinking and, and our vices I guess when they drive us blindly or we willfully demand that they supply us with more satisfactions or pleasures than are possible or due to us that is the point at which we depart from the degree of perfection that God wishes for us here on earth or as nature intended that is the measure of our character defects or if you wish our sins if we ask God will certainly forgive all our derelictions but in no case does he render us as white as snow and keep us that way without our co cooperation that is something we are supposed to be willing to work towards ourselves he asks only that we try as best we know how to make progress in the building of character so indeed it is about building of character and if we think about our youth where all our instincts and drives and desires were out of control as we came into adulthood and then we find that we had to live in a society where we had to live to the norms and of course drink is not one of them to excess and then addiction but of course every other behaviour can be an addiction too as many have found so step six, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character is AA's way of stating the best possible attitude one can take in order to make a beginning on this lifetime job in other words, 
to find balance in our natural drives and living so that we can be included in society. This does not mean that we expect all of our char yes, character defects to be lifted out of us as the drive to drink was. A few of them may be, but with most of them we shall have to be content with patient improvement. And that's the game, progress not perfect. Because if we try to be perfect from day one, we would fail. We, we would be back on pride and self-will. The key words entirely ready underline the fact that we want to aim at the very best we know or can learn. How many of us have this degree of readiness? In an absolute sense, practically nobody has it. The best we can do, with all honesty that, can, that we can summon, is to try to have it. Even then, the best of us will discover to our dismay that there is always a sticking point, a point at which we say, no, I can't give this up yet. And we shall often tread on even more dangerous ground when we cry, this I will never give up. Such is the power of our instincts to overreach themselves. No matter how far we have progressed, desires will always be found which oppose the grace of God, or, as some say, nature and providence, as we've got to where we are in our nature, and providence, that is, as the world is today. Some who feel they have done well may dispute this, so let's try to think about it a little further. Practically everybody wishes to be rid of his most glaring and destructive handicaps. No one wants to be so proud that he is scorned as a braggart, nor so greedy that he is labelled a thief. No one wants to be angry enough to murder, lustful enough to rape, gluttonous enough to ruin his health. No one wants to be agonised by the chronic pain of envy, or to be paralysed by sloth. Of course, most human beings don't suffer these defects at, defects at these rock-bottom levels. We who have escaped these extremes are apt to congratulate ourselves, yet can we? After all, hasn't it been self-interest, pure and simple, that has enabled us, most of us to escape? Not much spiritual effort is involved in avoiding excesses which will bring us punishment anyway, but when we face up to the less violent aspects of these very same defects, then where do we stand? And this is where it's about you and your, you and your understanding of life however it turns out to be. What we must recognise now is that we exalt in some of our defects. We really love them. Who, for example, doesn't like to feel just a little superior to the next fellow, or even quite a lot superior? Isn't it true that we like to let greed masquerade as ambition? To think of liking lust seems impossible. But how many men and women speak love with their lips and believe what they say? so that they can hide lust in a dark corner of their minds. And even whilst staying within conventional bounds, many people have to admit that their imaginary sex excursions are apt to be all dressed up as dreams of romance. Indeed, we can talk ourselves into anything. I know this. I've done it. Self-righteous anger also can be very enjoyable. In a perverse way, we can actually take satisfaction from the fact that many people annoy us for it brings a comfortable feeling of superiority. Gossip barbed with our anger, and I'm right, I'm smiling there, because it's very easy to become self-righteous in recovery. I mean, the simple answer is, the more self-righteous we are, the more we are dogmatic, the more we are stubborn and defiant about something we believe there is one path, and it happens to be mine. And what I've learned in recovery, my path, if I stick with it defiantly and stubbornly, I'll start to stumble and fall down pretty darn quickly because I need the input and in inclusion of everyone in my life. Gossip barbed with our anger, a polite form of murder by character assassination, has its satisfactions for us too. Here we are not trying to help those we criticise, we are trying to proclaim our own righteousness and uh, <clears throat> I know this from things which have happened today. Self-righteousness doesn't do me or anybody else any good. But if you point it out to another person that they're being self-righteous, am I not also being self-righteous? Because I'm developing the argument. So sometimes uh, in the fellowship we say desist of pen and tongue because there is nothing to add and nothing to be gained by it. 
even though we like to do it and to an extent I can do it too even now and then I think to myself I must laugh at myself and stop it because I don't know what is right for you and if I don't know what's right for you how do I know what's right for me which is why I always say I need to keep on learning when gluttony is less than ruinous we have a milder word for that too we call it taking our comfort we live in a world riddled with envy to a greater or lesser degree everybody is infected with it from this defect we must surely get a warped yet definite satisfaction else why would we consume such great amounts of time wishing for what we have not rather than working for it or angrily looking for attributes we shall never have instead of adjusting to the fact and accepting it and how often we work hard with no better motive than to be secure and slothful later on only we call it only we call that retiring consider too our talents for procrastination which is really sloth in five syllables nearly anyone can make a good list of the of such defects as these and few of us would be ser would seriously think of giving them up at least until they cause us excessive misery and without a doubt if we go hell for leather in one direction thinking we're right and we wonder why nobody's following us we do get somewhat alienated and, and messed up but if we don't stop giving up those ideas that we're always right or that my way or the highway is the right way then we are alone again and isolated and we may not drink but we're certainly not as sober as we could be some people of course may conclude that they are indeed ready to have all such defects taken from them but even these people if they construct a list of still milder defects will be obliged to admit that they prefer to hang on to some of them therefore it seems plain that few of us can quickly or easily become ready to aim at spiritual and moral perfection we want to settle for only as much perfection as it will as will get us by in life according of course to our various and sundry ideas of what will get us by so the difference between the boys and the men is the difference between striving for a self-determined objective and for the per perfect objective which is God of God yeah so we progress and are not perfect we realize some of our potential but our defects of character will get in the way if they remain out of balance and we hang on to them many many will ask at once ask how can we accept the entire implication of step six why that is perfection this sounds like a hard question but practically speaking it isn't only step one where we made the hundred percent admission we were powerless over alcohol can be practiced with absolute perfection the remaining 11 steps state perfect ideals so perfect ideals so strict adherence to the steps is about perfect ideals but you know strict adherence on a daily basis life is happening around us and we're going to be pushed and pulled in all sorts of ways so defects as well as virtues will be around there are goals towards which we look and the measuring sticks by which we estimate our progress seen in this light step six is still difficult but not at all impossible the only urgent thing is that we make a beginning and keep trying and that's it we make a beginning and keep trying so contingent on the day we ask for help and refocus ourselves around the virtues humility kindness abstinence chastity patience liberality and diligence we are on a better wicket if you like if you're a cricketer if we would gain any real advantage in the use of this step on problems other than alcohol we shall need to make a brand new venture into open-mindedness we shall need to raise our eyes towards perfection and be ready to walk in that direction it will seldom matter how haltingly we walk the only question will be are we ready so contingent on the day we ask are we ready to let go righteousness and every other excessive excessive outlook of personality trait are we ready and the only answer is yes really or if, you, if we are stubborn and, and defiant and angry 
the answer may be no, so we keep on trying. Looking again at those defects we are still unwilling to give up, we ought to erase the hard and fast lines that we have drawn. Perhaps we shall be obliged in some cases still to say, this I cannot give up yet. But we should not say to ourselves that I will never give up. Let's dispose of what happen appears to be a hazardous open end we have left. It is suggested that we ought to become entirely willing to aim towards perfection. We know that some delay, however, might be pardoned. That word in the mind of a rationalising alcoholic could, con could certainly be given a long-term meaning. He could say, how very easy, sure, I'll head towards perfection, but I'm certainly not going to hurry. Maybe I can postpone dealing with some of my problems indefinitely. Of course, this won't do. Such a bluffing of oneself will have to go the way of many another pleasant rationalisation. At the very least, we shall have to come to grips with some of our worst character defects and take action towards their removal as quickly as possible. A well, complete understanding that defects of character can come up in any moment of the day if we are provoked or we provoke others. The moment we say no never, our minds close against the grace of God or common sense. After all, what else would God's word be beyond common sense and wisdom for the common man? We're not talking rocket science here, we're talking common sense. Delay is dangerous and rebellion may be fatal. This is the exact point at which we abandon limited objective and move towards God's will for us, as nature intended, nature and providence. All these wonderful words I like because you know, spiritual is now. Spiritual is in the moment. It's not tomorrow and it's not yesterday. Although every experience we've had brings us to this spiritual moment of now. And either we accept life on life's terms, acceptance is the key always, or we get into trouble again. And it's being defiant or angry against our situation often. That life isn't giving us what we think we deserve. So just a reminder, the contrary virtues were derived as follows yeah. humility against pride kindness against envy abstinence against gluttony chastity against lust patience against anger liberality against greed and diligence against sloth and step six the seven deadly sins or removal of them is subject to asking on a daily basis how am I going to live today how do I want to behave how do I want to be open honest and willing to change my attitude and behavior to fit my circumstances and do my feelings fit my life right now if we've been good in our step four life story and expressed it and shared it with another human being and to our creator as we choose then step six defects fall out of that life story quite easily and also our shortcomings, the virtues, which is all about step seven. I don't know that we can take six and seven in isolation. I can have a step six day full of defects of character if I'm stubborn and defiant and go back to my old behavior. Or I can have a better day with a bit of courage, faith, confidence around humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality, and diligence. And I'm a slow learner and often have been a poor student in the past. I was criticized deeply by someone when they, I said I was a poor student in the past or I could be a poor student and it was pounced upon as a defect. It's a defect to keep on point, pointing it out. My defect would be not to say it, if you get my drift. So these are my views and understandings of the step six and seven. So how does it work for me on a daily basis? Well, in the morning I say how am I feeling, why and what can I do? And if I feel okay given my current situation, my feelings fit my, my experience right now, then life is understandable and comprehensible. I can, I can get on with it. But if my feelings don't fit my current reality, my feelings are over the top in some way in a particular direction of those defects or sins or well, my virtues are without foundation 
courage, faith and confidence over elated I need to ask myself why am I feeling this way and that's not to actually analyse to death how am I feeling, why and what can I do is a very great starting point I don't know how I feel right now, why? because I haven't given it a second thought what can I do? consider my options today or if I wake up angry, fearful, resentful or just feeling like I can't cope or I don't know what to do then I need a bit more courage, faith and confidence and I often get that by ringing somebody up or making contact with another human being not necessarily in fellowship but somebody who I love and loves me back and that's unconditional love it's not dependent on anything else other than love to and from people who care something my father said he wished he had cherished my mother more and been less superficial and indifferent and I think that sums it up cherish always and less superficial and less indifferent the only way I can be that way is to understand my own life and how I relate to other people so the steps work for me daily because in mind and in meditation it's about what is the next right thing for everyone inclusively and not just me so I'm merely a player and I'm not the chief critic anymore I hope although I will be chief critic in my own life often and sometimes flail at others and be critical but it does me no good and it does them no good step 6 June step 7 July I can have a bit of both in each day I can have a, a fairly bad start or a fairly good start enough courage, faith and confidence to keep on going or I could have fear very facing an ego in my heart it's as life is and it's often better if I talk to another human being or get to a fellowship meeting where I can see what is working for others so I can join in and be a part of again freedom to choose life life on life's terms always a unique and authentic path for each person and in fellowship with one similarity a desire to be sober today the serenity prayer is where I finish all my videos hopefully to do with recovery without the screeching of the police cars going past on gracious me a typical London night where I live anyway serenity prayer yes I even sleep through all of that during the night often and then get told about it by my neighbours so to God or in good conscience the serenity prayer is as follows God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today